In our last video, we compared Algorand to HBAR as a way to explore the Hedera Hashgraph network, but there's some stuff we left out. We didn't dive deep enough into that. So what is Hedera Hashgraph? Well, we're going to dig into that and why you should be bullish on Hedera on today's Frugal BC. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. We are talking about Hedera Hashgraph. That's right, the second video in as many weeks that we're talking about Hedera Hashgraph. Now, last time I did a very quick and dirty rundown of Hedera Hashgraph and the Hedera coin, kind of comparing the tokenomics between the two. Uh, and it was meant to be a very brief summary and just kind of compare the two networks. Uh, but one thing we left out is that Hedera really isn't a blockchain. It's a hash graph and it works very differently. So we're going to dive into how that works and some of the reasons I think you should be bullish, or at least some of the reasons I'm bullish on Hedera hash graph. So before we do that, guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button and uh, clicking the like button, remember you don't have to smash it. You can just kind of press it gently. Uh, so the point is we're bringing these experiments to you to like give you an idea of what we're doing and what works for us, what doesn't. And so you can make a more informed decision on your crypto holdings. And Hedera is one of the coins that I've been starting to get into. I uh, started buying some, haven't dug into the ecosystem a ton. But I did a lot of research on Hedera Hashgraph recently, and I, I've learned a lot more about it because some people did give me some criticism on the last video that I didn't dive in deep enough. And one person said I did zero research, which I think was a little, <laughs> I thought that was a little harsh. I think if I had done zero research, it would have been Hedera. What is it? I don't know. Next. <laughs> so clearly I clearly I did a little more than that. But yeah, there's a lot to dig into. And I, I'll tell you what, it gets confusing. I had to really, I had to basically write all this down. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of reading today. I apologize for that in advance. I had to kind of script it out. So, you know, basically what you have, instead of a blockchain, you have Hedera as a, uses a hash graph, which is a technology that it helps them, uh, let's, well, let me put it this way. So imagine you've got a bunch of people, they're all trying to send money to each other and keep track of who owes what. So Hedera Hashgraph is basically a technology that helps them do that without having to rely on a central authority to keep track of everything. And it doesn't use a blockchain. We'll explain more about that later. Uh, it's like a giant whiteboard where everyone can see who is paid who, everyone can agree what the current balances are. Again, this is sounding a lot like blockchain. We're going to explain it, I promise. Now, the way it works is this thing called a hash graph. It's basically a fancy way of keeping track of all the transactions and events that have happened on the system. Uh, so each transaction or event is represented by a little node on the hash graph, and the edges between those nodes show how the transactions are connected. So let's say Janet pays Rob and then Rob pays Madison. Well, the hash graph would show you that Janet's transaction caused Rob's transaction, which caused Madison's transaction. So by looking at the hash graph, everyone can agree on the order that the transactions happened in, right? So basically, it's kind of like a, starting to sound like a chain, I know, or sounding like, but it's really more of a graph, really more of a web, really. So we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, what if someone tries to cheat the system, you might be asking? Well, you know, let's say they say they, say they paid someone when they really didn't. Well, that's where Hedera Hashgraph's uh, virtual voting mechanism comes in. And it's basically all the nodes agreeing, you know, voting on these on this network to agree on what is correct and what is not. And it helps everyone agree on the order of the transactions and prevents them from spending the same money twice. Now, again, this is really, really sounding a lot like a blockchain. Really, and it, you know, it's really hard to piece apart how it's different from a blockchain because it sounds very similar, but it really goes back to the data structure. So like a blockchain is a line of blocks and each each all this all this ledger is put into blocks and the blocks are chained together. Whereas a hash graph is more like a web of nodes where each node represents a transaction or event and the edges between the nodes show how they're connected. So it gets into like the data side of it, into the how the ledger is handled. So it still uses a ledger. It just does it a little bit differently. Now, the reason they do this is because it's a lot more, it's a lot faster and more efficient. It's supposed to be able to do 10,000 transactions per second, which is similar to what Algorand will be with its newest upgrades. So, and right now it's about 6,000, but remember Ethereum is like 24. So uh, we're talking orders of make, well, I should be careful how I use those terms. We're, we're talking about quite a bit, uh, quite a bit faster. Let's just say that. 
So, okay, so we know it's really fast, and it's really fast chat. This makes it really good for like supply chain management, financial services, online voting, that sort of thing. Why am I bullish on Hedera? Well, for one thing, it's a pretty unique solution to what's well, kind of a difficult problem. You know, there's a tri there's the trilemma problem of fast, secure, and expensive, or at least that's the one that I care about. Um, this was very fast, uh, very secure. It's decentralized, and it's pretty inexpensive. And one thing I didn't point out in my last video is that the remember how I said it was like 0 .001, 0 0.001 cents. Well, that is set. That that is going to be that price, and it's never going to change from that. So it's take it's actually pegged to the fiat, not the price of the coin. So I talk about how Algorand is so really inexpensive. And, you know, really, even if even if Algorand coins are worth $100 or $200, like the price will go up a little bit. It won't be really expensive. But Hedera, Hedera Hashgraph, the HBAR coins for, for using the coins on HBAR just be really cheap all the time. It just does not go up. It's pegged to that price. Very interesting way to do it. You know, another reason is that the node operators we talked about, you know, they're they're owned by like Google, Boeing, IBM. These companies, these are their partners in these projects. And I think that's wonderful. Uh, when you got stuff like Google, Boeing, IBM, those big names, and there's, there's a lot of them, believe me. Uh, when you got those big partners, that's a big deal. So uh, that's pretty cool. That, that's that's a good reason to be bullish. And you got a really low buy-in. So uh, right now the coin is just under $0.04 cents as, I, as I record this video. It may have gone up, gone up since then. But very inexpensive. You really can't go wrong with a uh, coin that's that low and has a lot of price potential. It's gone up way last last bull run. It went up way past its uh, its initial launch price, which I can't say the same about Algorand. That's something I talked about in my last video. I think I think uh, it's going to get attention for having a unique way of handling this solution. It, it definitely stands out. You know, is the hash graph that much better than blockchain? Hard to say because. Um, some of the blockchains are running really fast now, like Algorand's is going really fast and can possibly go faster. I uh, haven't seen anything about whether this is upgradable, whether this because uh, I know they're finding new and new ways to make Algorand even faster. Uh, they just got up to 6,000 potential TPS last winter, I think, last November, and now it's already up to, it's already, it's already going up to 10,000. Uh, it would be the same as Hedera Hashgraph, so I don't know if it's upgradable or not. Uh, can't be forked. There's no such thing as forking in it. I always like that. Those are the reasons I'm bullish on Hedera. Um, downsides, I've said this in my last video. I still agree with it. And I think it's a little too centralized. And I've seen some good arguments about why it might be more decentralized than, say, like Algorand's governance, because a lot of times in governance, it's just really big whales. But now you have really big companies. They talked about having someone, someone made the argument that you have teams now at these companies so that might help be more decentralized but i gotta think like the companies they usually kind of move as a monolith right like if if google's founders want them to work a certain way that's what they're going to do right so it's a top-down approach but i've also said that i'm not sure like pure decentralization is always the goal like i think sometimes we get a little too caught up in like everything has to be as decentralized as possible. I'm not sure that's always best. For example, with DEXs, like I kind of like the idea that they might do a little vetting on some of the projects that they allow on. So I'm okay with that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so that's kind of a maybe. Also, they do have plans to add more node operators in the future. This is just kind of the start where they have these companies with, uh, now I've heard seen 27 total. I thought it was actually more than that, but when I counted, and you know, the, so the companies that own the nodes actually voted to make this thing open source, which I think is also really interesting. You know, open source is kind of the standard when it comes to crypto. Uh, a lot of people don't like closed source stuff when it comes to that. So actually, I don't know why I put that on the downsides. It's possibly actually on the on the bullish part. Uh, but anyway, I'm I'm kind of a big fan of Hedera. I'm, the more I look into it, the more I like it. I think it's really interesting. I think the technical people will understand how different it is from the blockchain. I think for the average person, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like when you go through uh, the Coinbase tutorials to get, you know, you get your free coins if you go through the tutorials and it's like, yeah, yeah, oh, this one works so much different than all the other ones. And, you know, really it's kind of like, yeah, okay, it's like, it's got this one little tweak that's different, whatever. <laughs> you know? 
you know, it's like most people just don't care. It's like you want to see the use case for it. So uh, they're just not going to care about the tech. They're going to care about what does the tech do? It's like you don't care about the tech that's in your iPhone. You care about like, what can I do with my iPhone right now? And crypto in general still kind of has to get to that point. And Hedera Hashgraph, I think, I just think that people just don't care about the backside of that. I mean, obviously crypto fans do, but the average person's not going to. So when you need adoption, you're going to want the uh, the killer app, so to speak. But anyway, I hope that video is interesting. I hope it explained a little more. There's some really good online tutorials if you want to dive deeper into the hash graph. You know, I kind of glossed over it. It's confusing. I've, I've watched like three or four videos on it. And every time I watch it, it's like, okay, but I, I, I'm just not understanding. It, it seems like it still seems like a blockchain to me, even though I know it's not a blockchain Specifically, it kind of seems like it does the same thing, just in a slightly different way. Um, you know, it kind of seems like one of those differences that, uh, you know, doesn't really make that much of a difference for most people. But it does seem to make it really fast. Uh, what do you think about this? I think I did a little better in the last in the last video. I don't know. Uh, you know, how much Adair are you holding? Leave it in the comments below. Anything you write, you know, always, always love the criticism or feedback, but make sure you cite sources because it helps me sort that out. And hope everyone's doing great out there. Remember, not your keys, not your crypto. You know, get your stuff off the exchanges as much as possible. And as always, I'm Frugal BC, and I'll see you in the future.